You know, so yeah, you can steal whatever you want to steal, and yeah, we won't do any jail time. Somebody stole a bunch of steaks from Trader Joe's, and this became the leading story. The leading story on MSNBC's Morning Joe. This is incredible. I'm going to show you a short clip of their much longer segment, but of course, it does not address the underlying issues, why people are struggling, why they feel the need to steal basic necessities and food. It was triggered, this whole segment was triggered by this story here, which of course you expect from Fox News, alleged shoplifter seen carrying stack of steaks out of New York City Trader Joe's. This is a local news report at best. This has no impact on society. This does not matter in anyone's daily life, but it was covered by Fox News and became the leading story on Morning Joe. Check this out. It is true that people are just walking in and walking out with it. No, there's no doubt about it. I mean, uh, you go to a local pharmacy, Dwayne Reed or, or Rite Aid, any of them, and you've got to get someone to help yeah. assist you. I mean, they, they have the little button there. Yep. You hit the buzzer, and the guy comes over and unlocks your toothpaste. Yes. I mean, we're talking about basic <laughs> stuff. He's <laughs> <That's laughs> <it. laughs> like, as well. When, what did I miss that we now have to lock up toothpaste? <sighs> Yeah, and well, certain, yeah. I, I, I'm just curious, Rev, really quickly. I mean, Eric Adams has said he's going to do his best to fix this. I'm just curious. I mean, he's got a governor who's saying, well, I don't know that we want to give the judges any power to make decisions on whether they've seen the same bad guy in front of them like 12 times in the past week. And then you've got a DA. I know you talk to the DA. The DA's going, oh, we don't want to punish anybody unless it's like really bad. You know, so, yeah, you can steal whatever you want to steal. And, yeah, we won't do any jail time. And then you've got, you know, then you've got a woke uh, city council. I'm just curious, is Eric Adams going to be able to do anything? Well, he's obviously surrounded by elected officials who want New York to remain chaotic. Well, I think he's got a challenge there because there is a debate in the criminal justice system. And there are those that are concerned, including me, about overloading the system and the jails with petty crimes. But at the same time, you cannot have a culture where people are just at random, just robbing and stealing and is out of control and is put on the front page of newspapers, which only encourages others to do it. Uh, in fairness to Eric, he's only been mayor five weeks but in, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but even as I'm fair to him, Eric, they're locking up my toothpaste. Yeah. <laughs> this segment went on for seven more minutes. The opening segment on MSNBC's Morning Joe. The obvious glaring issue here, before I get to some reactions online and some other issues with Trader Joe specifically, maybe stories they could have covered at some point, but of course have not. But before I get there, the obvious glaring issue with this segment is you have a bunch of rich people sitting around a table looking at shoplifting as a issue to deal with uh, policing and making these people criminals, as opposed to looking at the underlying issues, the widening gap between the rich and the poor, and maybe doing something about that, understanding people are unable to afford food for their family, unable to afford basic necessities. That's why they're locking up toothpaste. To not understand that, to not address that as the main concern here, and instead look at it as, we got to lock these people up. This guy trying to feed uh, his family, got to put him in jail. That's going to solve the problem. That's going to make his family better. How do you sit there like this, completely unaware of what you are saying? Or maybe they are aware. And look, my issue, my biggest issue with these sorts of stories covering the media like this is I don't know what the hell is in their minds. I'm not sure if they are, if this is how they truly feel. If they are told to push a certain narrative, I think certain people do push certain narratives and just are complete sociopaths. They don't care. But largely, I think the biggest issue is that they are just very disconnected from reality. They truly do not understand why people go and shoplift. They think it's about, oh, this guy just wants to have free steak as opposed to maybe he can't afford it. Maybe he needs to eat. Maybe his family needs to eat. Maybe we're seeing these petty crimes. We're seeing all the shoplifting because people can't afford to live. And maybe address that. Maybe talk about the need for higher wages. Maybe discuss the need for unions to give workers a voice. Maybe discuss any other story. But no, shoplifting and using uh, this story as a way to discuss the need for more policing in New York City. Absolutely insane. So let me get to some uh, reactions here. Or actually first, before I get to reactions. On Trader Joe's, why grocery stores like Trader Joe's throw out so much perfectly good food? 
this is a normal thing that grocery stores do. Would you prefer this food to be thrown away as opposed to somebody feeding their family with it? I mean, this is a quote from the former president of Trader Joe's saying the reality as a regional grocery manager is if you see a store that has really low waste in perishables, you are worried. If a store has low waste numbers, it can be a sign that they aren't fully in stock and that the customer experience is suffering, wrote Ranch or, or, or Roche, who recently founded the Daily Table, a supermarket that repurposes expired food. The former president of Trader Joe's saw that food waste was such an issue that he actually went on to start a different company to combat food waste. And Trader Joe's, of course, one of the worst performing grocery chains in this regard in terms of their um, the waste of food that they put out and don't donate. They do donate some of it. A lot of it does not get donated, and they are one of the top companies that throw out food. So, yeah, this could have been, you know, maybe a topic of conversation involved in this piece or this segment. You also have, uh, of course, Trader Joe's violating workers' rights on a consistent basis. This story from Jacobin, when workers at Trader Joe's flagship location collectively organized to challenge their pandemic-era treatment by the company, management responded by interrogating them. We spoke to a worker who filed a complaint with the NLRB over the crackdown. And of course, I linked all my sources below the video. You can read through that interview if you want. But they have a long history of this. Also from Bloomberg Law. This is from back in 2019. Trader Joe's and grocery store outlet fined $1.6 million for wage violations. They were fined for wage theft. I don't know. Maybe this should be a story or should have been a story. I bet you can go back, search it up. I can guarantee you Morning Joe did not cover this but they will cover one man stealing some steak. This story as well, Trader Joe's and other U.S. firms suppress unionization efforts during pandemic. So this has been a long running issue with Trader Joe's and not just Trader Joe's, of course, companies at large and their attempts to union bust. And this uh, as well over the past year, Trader Joe's employee says he was fired for requesting better COVID protections. And this became such a big story that Trader Joe's actually rehired him back because they realized it was not a good look. Again, I guarantee you, they did not cover this story either. But let's get to some reactions online. So this from um, Gross Dorian. It's great to see that America has solved the moral dilemma of, quote, would you steal a loaf of bread to feed your starving family by answering no. And if I ever did, I would like to go to jail for it. <laughs> this from Reverend James Major Woodall saying shoplifting is not a public safety nor a criminal justice priority. Maybe we can talk about why there's a need to steal. Yeah, just to, let me just highlight, this clip came out because Al Sharpton posted this with a tweet saying, an alleged shoplifter has been caught on tape appearing to steal 10 steaks from New York City Trader Joe's. I joined MSNBC to speak on the need for public safety, <laughs> public safety from this shoplifter on the loose to address criminal justice concerns. So completely absurd. John Adderoli here saying how many stakes would need to be stolen to equal what the cops do through civil asset forfeiture or corporations through wage theft or the government denying us hum humane paid leave. Get the F out with your stakes. <laughs> this from Joe Sandberg, last tweet here. Why does our economy leave eight out of 10 Americans living paycheck to paycheck? Corruption. If the minimum wage had increased at the rate of productivity since 1960, it would be over $24 now. It's only $7.25 because corporations donated to politicians to oppose a living wage. None of this addressed in that Morning Joe segment. This is supposed to be the liberal network. I mean, it, this is liberal. <laughs> People confuse liberal and left, but this is a liberal point of view. This is a, a neoliberal view of politics, but they think this is like the network that represents the left. No, th these are conservatives. These are economic conservatives talking about how people should be thrown in jail for stealing steak. It is completely bizarre. There is no actual true left voice on television. There is, I should say, caveat, occasionally, Mehdi Hassan on MSNBC, he is actually, he does great work on that network. The occasional, you know, host will say the right thing. But a story like this being the leading, the top story on MSNBC in the morning really shows you where their priorities are. 